I rise to uh, also contribute to the debate on the Aged Care Single Quality Framework Reform Bill of 2018. In every single budget, this government has attacked older Australians and ripped out funding from critical aged care services. Since they've come to power, the Liberal government has cut more than $2 billion now from aged care. On their watch, the waiting list for home care packages has ballooned to over 105,000 and older Australians have been left to languish for well over a year to access packages that they have already been approved for. Some have been forced into residential care uh, too soon and in some uh, circumstances against their wishes when they simply um, couldn't wait any longer or their families were in no position to lend further support. This is a tragic outcome, Deputy Speaker, that decreases the quality of life for older Australians. It hurts the families and uh, the extended networks that these people uh, belong to within their neighbourhoods and communities. And of course, it is a much, much bigger impost for uh, the federal budget to place people um, into residential aged care facilities when it was firstly not their desire uh, and be in many cases a premature um, move into aged residential care. In May, um, it looked like the government was finally going to invest properly in aged care. In the 2018 budget, we were told that uh, there were great things to look forward to. Well, what an absolutely cruel and shameful hoax that turned out to be. In fact, it very soon became clear that there was no new money for aged care. Instead, the government was funding the new packages by ripping funding out from other parts of, age, of the aged care budget. The government could not find a single cent to solve the aged care crisis, yet it had time to find $80 billion to give tax cuts to the big business, to those multinationals, and the four banks talk about twisted priorities. Not a single cent for aged care, but you can give tax cuts to those who frankly don't need it and haven't even requested it. The bill before us today establishes a single set of aged care quality standards for all providers that are covered under the Aged Care Act. They represent a change in focus, moving from providers' uh, processes to the quality of outcomes for consumers. These update um, a number of standards that currently apply to different sorts of care, including two for home care, four for residential aged care and two more for the National Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Flexible Care um, Aged Care Program Quality Review. These changes will come into effect in July of next year, 2019, which of course is a, an extension already on what were the government's uh, planned start date of, of July 2018 uh, to give providers the time they needed to prepare. Uh, there was no way the government could achieve its initial uh, intentions. It was uh, already um, we have moved into having to get extensions of time. But the simple fact, um, uh, these changes are because of the results of some consultations that took place with the aged care sector and other stakeholders, and those consultations have been taking place since 2015. So, you know, some three years ago, uh, most of those uh, consultations were largely not controversial. In fact, uh, we're only seeing this legislation now three years later than uh, first um, announced, and that's really, you know, that's completely unsatisfactory. A massive time lag um, between intention and delivery into this house. Over which period, over those three years, we've seen, you know, wait lists grow longer for those aged care packages, um, people struggling with increased out-of-pocket expenses to access care. Um, all of these issues are being compounded 
uh, at a time when inaction becomes the sort of default position of this government. And um, there is, of course, a tendency to drag the chain uh, when it comes to important aged care issues by this government. In October last year, the Carnell Review of the National Aged Care Quality Regulation was given to the government. The review, which focused on quality care, put forward 10 recommendations. One of the most notable of these was the recommendation to establish an independent aged care quality and safety commission, which Labor thoroughly supports. While the government has agreed to this, we are yet to see any details of the commission, which is due to start on 1 July next year. We are also concerned that the minister seems to be very focused on residential care providers at the expense of those Australians that choose to stay at home. And this is a critical point. Uh, the government needs to pay as much attention to ensuring that the same quality aged care Australians get in residential facilities will also be available to those who choose care as part of their home care packages. And of course, we still need more information um, about how home care will be integrated into the new commission. Because, quite frankly, with the botch up the government have made of home care so far in their tenure, we have good reason to be concerned. The Australian Medical Association were right when they said, and I quote, much more needs to be achieved to ensure older Australians receive the care they need and deserve in their latter years. Although I suspect that calling the Turnbull government, um, uh, calling that what the Turnbull government has done to home care in this country is a botch up is way too kind. Those opposite have known about the relentless growth in the waiting lists for home care packages for a long time now. But still, they went ahead with their decision to spend $80 billion instead of precious public money on tax cuts for the corporations rather than fixing this appalling aged care mess of their own creation. As I mentioned earlier, Australians were led to believe in the week leading up to the 2018 budget that the terrible crisis facing aged care was going to finally be addressed, that there be a substantial investment to reduce Mr Turnbull's home care waiting, um, package waiting list. But on 6 May, the Health Minister even went on the record to promise, and I quote, it's going to be a very good budget for health and for aged care in particular. And on this side of the chamber, we were optimistically, you know, we were cautiously optimistic, I should say, at the early budget news. Regretfully, our hopes were thoroughly dashed on budget night when we learned that the figure that had been referred to was already in the forward estimates. There was absolutely no new money at all. Not a single dollar, nothing, zero. In fact, more than 21,000 residential care places are set to be cut over the next three years to pay for the very modest increase in home care packages that has been made available. Independent budget analysis by Macquarie University Centre for the Health Economy found, and I quote, the Australian government must also invest more in home care packages and residential aged care places. The additional high-level home care packages falls way short of the 82,237 consumers currently waiting for an improved high-level package. There is also a projected 94,200 um, gap in residential aged care places by 2025. And not only did the government um, not spend a single uh, cent extra in aged care, but they tried to pull a swift one by trying to convince us that aged care was actually the good news centrepiece of the budget. The absolute gall is breathtaking. Let's be very clear. This is a hoax, pure and simple. The government knew that not a, not a red cent more funding was being given to aged care in this budget. They knew that their so-called investment was being ripped out of, shamelessly out of other parts of the aged care portfolio. And they certainly knew that this shuffling of money wouldn't result in any net benefit to older Australians. And yet they still proudly backgrounded journalists with leaks of billions of dollars in extra funding. 
The government's utter duplicity was confirmed once and for all in Senate estimates last month. When department officials confirm that there is no new funding and, agreements, uh, and agreeing that the funds had all come from existing resources that were spent otherwise. This is appalling. Government members have treated older Australians with utter contempt and they should hang their heads in shame. At this point, I'd like to um, point out that the only government member to put their name down to speak on this legislation, um, sorry, that there's not one government member to speak on this legislation today. One single member was willing to back in their own government's action in this important area, and I think that speaks volumes. One solitary person and the government benches volunteering to justify the inexcusable. Unbelievable. But actually, it is quite believable, really, because government members would know, as well as I do, that their budget announcement was a rort, a cynical attempt to make people believe they were doing something about a crisis without having spent a dime. They would be acutely aware that their leadership has again backed in big business and the banks ahead of older Australians, and they would know exactly what this continued negligence is doing to their older constituents in the communities and their families. Because just like me, government members will be seeing the real world impacts of the Turnbull government's neglect of our aged care system in their electorate offices every day. In Newcastle, I am regularly contacted by older people or uh, family members who are at their wits end. People like Richard from Ellamore Vale. Richard's in his 70s and requires permanent oxygen. He wants to stay at home, but he needs help to do so. A level four package would give Richard access to a portable oxygen tank to use when he has to leave his home, when he attends to his medical appointments, um, to go about regular day-to-day -day business that we would all take for granted. It would help Richard maintain his independence and ensure that he is able to get to external appointments without ever worrying that his oxygen is going to run out. Deputy Speaker, I couldn't think of something more terrifying than to be timing all of the business you have to do outside of your house on the basis of how long your oxygen tank can last for. But that's what Richard faces every day. And, uh, if he were able to access the Level 4 package, which he is entitled to, uh, he would be able to have a portable um, uh, oxygen package that would be able to give him so, so much more independence in our community. He's been waiting for more than eight months for this Level 4 package. When he calls um, my aged care, he gets told that he's the highest priority and that he'll have a package within one to three months. And so far, every month has passed with no good news and no package. This is not good enough, and the government must fix it. But instead, they're devoting their energy to pretending that it's being fixed. It's no surprise that the government seems to be sticking with their chosen strategy of spin and obfuscation on this day. Because now we see the government trying to dodge scrutiny by delaying public release of the quarterly waitlist data for home care packages. Australians deserve to know where is that data? Why is there a delay in releasing this data? And what is the government hiding? It's time for the government to come clean with older Australians and immediately release that waitlist data. We learnt during estimates that the department has committed to releasing the information two months after the end of the quarter. Given that the most recent quarter ended in March, we should have had that data in May. We're now, what, the 19th of June? No data made available to Australian people. One might be cynical enough to you know, think that perhaps this data is not going to see the light of day before certain by-elections that might be occurring around the country. It's not good enough. This is a, uh, it has been a cruel hoax on older Australians to pretend otherwise. Um, the government needs to do the right thing, invest 
properly in these home care packages and release this data so that all is come clean with all Australians.